Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Uh, it's been a while. I know that I've put out a couple videos here and there, but I haven't really done anything on my Rogue in a really long time. So, uh, with the massive boost to experience and rare loot and enemy spawns, uh, I figured now would be a good time just to go have some fun. We're just going to go beat up some dragons here in Temple of Ishin. I got my rogue some insane uh, equipment improvements over the last couple weeks. Stuff I've been working on, buying and selling items and moving chrono around and stuff like this. And just eventually I gave my, my rogue a very, very much while upgrade worthwhile upgrade I should say. Um, I'm really excited for it so like I said I just wanted to put this stuff to good use. We're gonna go beat up some dragons for a little bit and uh, we're just gonna get to talking here. It's just gonna be a old school talk and kill video. Um, worked on some AAs here and there for my rogue but for the most part just equipment upgrades. I've got pretty much the best dagger that you can use in the game right now. Uh, my secondary is not the best, but it's the second best or third best, so you know what? I'm fine with that. We got about 100,000 uh, more hit points than what we had before, and probably about two or 3,000 more AC. And we still have some spots that we need to upgrade, but we are in a much better position now than what we were before. So, I've, ac I've actually been taking my group through some of the endgame content, which is some of the Terror of Luckland group content, and that's been really fun. Since I finally got my Shadow Knight fully decked out and everything, and I've been taking him, he's been just an absolute beast to do some of the current endgame content that used to be pretty difficult. So, anywho's, it is, it's a good time, and, uh, like I said, I've just been wanting to bring my rogue through some of this stuff while we have the uh, additional loot going on from the insane amount of charity that has been raised. And because I think last year they, we got like five or six thousand dollars, but we ended up they ended up raised. I say we because I, I tried to donate some as well, but we ended up getting insane uh, amounts of donation. So, all in all, it ended up being over like $110,000 or something, I think, that they've raised. Just for the EverQuest side, like, at Daybreak Gaming. So, you know, it's been absolutely insane. So, really, really happy. I'm really, really happy that they were able to raise so much money for the kids. Because that's what it comes down to. It was all for the kiddos. And it was just a huge success. I would have put a video up on it, but I didn't want to seem like I'm shilling for the donation perks or for the Faceless Guild or anything like that. I wanted to do all of this strictly, so uh, I just wanted to mention it because it's awesome. I mean, you can still currently donate, but they met their goal that they wanted to hit at least 30,000 and then they doubled it and then they tripled it. And because of that, we now have 200% experience going on for at least a week. So, anywho's, uh, yeah, we're just putting together, we're going through and killing these guys because number one, we're getting additional loot right now. And number two, there's additional experience. And I really want to put together a little twink group of characters and enjoy that 200% experience this weekend. So I figured it goes hand in hand. Why not run some of these dungeons, get some twink loot, deck out our characters, and then have some fun this weekend. And as usual, these guys are just dropping absolutely insane items. Get our characters kind of decked out here. Of course, a lot of this stuff we already have, which is totally fine. I haven't done a good job of keeping my bank cleared out like I should. I'm pretty good about moving stuff around, but there's some items that for some reason just got shoved to the back of my bank and I just keep forgetting about. 
Oh well. Uh, another thing I have been working on is... Uh, I've been working on flagging my character for Ashengate. Which, those of you who don't know, Ashengate is one of the Serpent Spine expansions. It's one of the first expansions. It's level 75. Uh, one of the first uh, raid endgame zones that started requiring back flagging to be able to request the raids. I could piggyback off of somebody and ask them to get me a flag or something, but that just... That's annoying. I have to depend on being on when somebody else is on, etc, etc. This way, I can get my character flagged and I can take my group through whenever I want. So I'm really excited for that. We're going to be putting together that little bit. I had to go through and completely, uh, you know, ally up with some of the faction there in the Ashen Gate area to even be able to request these raids. I had to go through and do the Vergalid Mines raid, which super annoying, dear god. I am never going to run that thing again, even just because it's super frustrating. Super, super frustrating. Um, anywho's, so Ashen Gate is going to end up being a really fun raid that we're going to end up getting to run. Mostly just because I've never done it before. So that is going to be awesome. Man, all this loot. We're going to have to run the Lucklin raids as well. Shiny metallic gauntlets. Oh, we already have that. That's a big rip. Oh, also, another thing I wanted to talk about is this suit of armor that I got my rogue. I'm really happy with the way it looks. It's actually a cool uh, Heroes Forge set. It is... I believe it's a Dark Elf set. Let me see here. Yeah, Dark Elf Chain Chest set. It's the Chain set, which I think looks really cool. It's definitely one of the best Hero Forge sets, in my opinion. I don't really want all the glowing stuff all around it. I just want to look badass, and I really think that this set looks cool. So, it was expensive, but worth it. Of course, I always say it's worth it because I want to validate myself in spending money on a stupid purchase, but, you know, shh, that's just between you and me. We'll make the money back somehow. Hmm. Some of this stuff I feel like I never get to see drop. Because most of these dragons just drop two items. So seeing these guys dropping four, five, and six items is kind of insane. Or in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six. Jesus. This must be insane on Mischief right now. Because Mischief has already doubled the loot. So... I'm sure people are having a good old time on Mischief right now. Boots the Dead Dream. Amulet of the Storm. Wow, that's really bad. I guess it was good for the AC back in the day, but whew, that is not good now. Anyways, yeah, I am really happy with... Uh, the charity situation, how much was raised on that. I mean, of course, I can't take any credit for it. It all comes down to, uh, you know, Dark, Dark Paul, Daybreak Gaming, whatever you want to call them. And the people that put together all the fundraising for it. And just simply, the people who donated. It, like, if, it, if people hadn't donated, then none of this would have mattered in the first place. But a lot of people donated a lot of money. There were some really cool incentives, like a mount if you donated $100 some ornaments if you donated a certain amount. Really good stuff. All in all, I think it was 
awesome. Why is... Wow, that's really bad stats. Oof. All this loot, boys. We are going to be twinked out on some alts. I think we're going to do something different, too. Most of the stuff I've done so far has been, uh, like, melee characters. Because they're the easiest to control and navigate, especially if we're doing multiple. I think this weekend, I think we're going to do a Necromancer. I started a Necromancer before, like, several months back. And I was, like, like leading him through and having a pretty good time with him. But... Um, I just didn't have the focus at the time with EverQuest to follow through with it. But I think we're going to do it this time. Especially if we can get some really good Necromancer items, like these robes at the end, which I'm sure is going to end up dropping. With all the extra loot that we can end up getting. God, this is going to be nice. Uh, but yeah, just to kind of recap, if you don't know, there is 200% experience bonus going on right now. In addition to that, there's 175% uh, faster, more common rare spawns. There is 125% more coin and 125% more loot. And it's just a great time to play EverQuest right now. So if you're into that sort of thing... Oh, I don't think I've ever one-shot him before. We hit 340,000, 340,000, 220,000, so... Nice. Ooh. Well, he didn't drop the robes. But he dropped a lot of really cool spells. Eternal Rupture. Damn, it's got some really good Enchanter spells. Ancient Life Pain. That's going to be good for our Necromancer. Good for a Druid. Oh, man. It's a shame to see some of this stuff go to waste. Might have to pull out our Banker. Mirylacar Dagger of Vengeance. Of course, doesn't really do a low-level character any good, but... Well, I'm really shocked that we didn't get the, uh, the boots, or the, uh, the chest piece. That's really kind of shocking that we didn't get that. Well, uh, this area went really quick, so let's rebuff, and, uh, I guess we can go hit, uh, Straw Temple as well. I mean, heck, I didn't expect to be done in 15 minutes. All right, we are, we're in the little maze here to find Saru, so let's get going. area always gives me the most trouble. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. There we go. Easy peasy. All right, let's see. See, there's other people here. <laughs> and Rogue, four bodies needed so my friend and I can do some old raids. <laughs> yep. Other people with the same idea. Thirty-two platinum. Damn, these guys are dropping all kinds of stuff. Come on, Saru, let's go.
Look at all those procs. No damage needed. Oh, let's see here. Damn. Damn, look at that. Look at all those spells. Wow. Okay. Ancient Legacy of Blades. We got the Old School Druid Damage Shield. Saru's Torque. Got the Sword of Truth, just because. The Mantle. And the Legs. Wow. So I'm pretty sure we just proc the three times lucky loot there, if that's such a thing. Kodak's Endless Intellect. Nice. It's a shame to see two of these wrapped leggings rotting, but... <sighs> yep. Let's see... Do I want to pull my banker out for this? Nah, we're just going to let it rot. That's fine. It's whatever. Let's see what they're selling for in the bazaar right now. Look at the, the boots going anywhere from 300,000 to 2 million. The mantle for basically nothing. The veals for basically nothing. The legs, however, are selling pretty good. So. Oh, well. Um, okay, so we're done here. Let's... Where do we want to go now? Mm. Ooh. Okay, okay. We could... Let's do Vexthal. We're going to do Vexthal also. Because we can get us some masks, and basically everything in Vexthal is non-lore. So, uh, this might be a little bit longer video today, boys. We're going to have a little bit extra content. It feels good to want to do these raids again. Not that I haven't wanted to do this stuff, it's just that I kind of got bored with it. With how many times I've ran these raids since the... Uh, with how many times I've done these raids since the Agents of Change were introduced on live servers back in September of last year. Um, I've done these quite a bit, and that's kind of an understatement. There were some of these raids I've done practically every day. Yeah, some of these we did a lot. A lot, a lot. Saru we did almost every week there for a while, just because once we got it, finally got a key and we got access to this area, it's, uh, we've done these a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say. So we're going to make our way to Maiden's Eye. There's so many, so many of these raids that I want to do. And I have been working on, like I said, I know I mentioned uh, I've done some group content for uh, the new Terra of Lucklin expansion recently. Uh, I've been working on trying to clear a group encounter for uh, Shay Venetros. 
I don't know if, anybody, if you, any of you remember that raid back in the day. It's an old school Luckland raid. Uh, she, he or she, whatever you want to call it, has some death touches and some weird mechanics. Used to be pretty difficult. But with the new Terror of Luckland expansion, that was redone. There is a group encounter version of it. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's actually really, really cool. It's got some cool mechanics to it. There's like a uh, curse that's put on you. And if you don't cleanse it in a period of time, it death touches you. It's completely unavoidable. It does like a billion damage. Uh, there's that. And it has some like cool like heal mechanics where if some enemies walk into it, it heals it. Uh, there is a uh, YouTuber on here on YouTube that does uh, like necromancer solo kills and really really cool guy uh, does some crazy solo content but he actually just soloed moloed the encounter between him and his mercenary and it's actually insane the fact that he was able to do it and get away with it because of like some luck with cleanses and just some timing with other things the fact that he's, he was able to do it he just completely knocked it out of the park He'd uploaded a couple fail videos of it, but I think all in all he ended up trying it like 30 some odd times before he was able to do it, but he ended up soloing a group encounter. A level 125 enemy, raid boss enemy right now, and he was able to solo it on a uh, necromancer. Necromancers are uh, kind of insane in the end game right now, especially if you've got like the necessary clickies, the rank two and three spells, and you're just, you can just blow it out of the water. You can beat so many different classes and damage. Anyways, it was a really cool video, but that's one of the uh, things I've been working on trying to do myself. So I can beat it solo, quote unquote solo, with a group of my characters and I think that's going to be really fun once we can actually give it a try on recording because I've, I've tried to do it a couple of different times now uh, and it, it's just it's hard it's hard to, to uh, have my characters because I have a druid that can cleanse the damage that he does but just going back and forth between trying to keep my tank alive and all that other good stuff it's just it's a lot Meanwhile, I just have, you know, my three DPS characters just mindlessly grinding away on the enemy, on the boss uh, behind him. It's just nuts to think about the fact that it's been soloed at this point. Anyways, uh, we are now in Vexthal, and where is my... Here we go, lockpick. Good old Vexthal. Let's get us some extra loot here. It would be cool if this had happened during the uh, fabled content as well, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Darkened amulet, nice. I'm confident here that we're going to get the best possible loot multiple times. Which, I don't know about y'all, but that is pretty exciting in my opinion because that means uh, not just a little bit of loot but a lot of twink loot and as much as I play this game sometimes I just can't get enough of running my characters through these old school zones I 
hate these old school staircases. Alright, Mr. Diabo Ziva. Damn. Oh, well, speaking of Necromancer, here's a good Necromancer clicky for us. Causes your target's body to splurt, doing progressively more damage the longer it lasts. Nice. Oh, man, we just got... We got the hookup, folks. My Twinks will be happy with some Luckland stuff. And I think this next uh, run through, I do have some of my twinks for this 200% exper uh, experience boost, I think, over the weekend. I think I'm going to outlaw using Defiant gear again. Because that just doesn't seem... That doesn't seem like any fun, in my opinion. Defiant gear is insane it's awesome it's cool and everything don't get me wrong but it's just it just ruins so much about the game for me in a low level le uh, leveling experience it's cool because it just makes you feel so dang overpowered but it just it sucks that it just completely overrides so much of this old content God, I'm such a broken record. If anybody here has been watching my videos for basically the past year now, which, hooray, we passed, we just passed a year anniversary here for the channel, which is insane. But if any of y'all have been watching any of my previous videos or streams or anything, you've probably heard me talking about Defiant Gear numerous times, where I usually say I really just don't like what it did to the game. It's a cool, cool idea. I love it because it's so overpowered, but I also hate it because all this cool gear that you would normally use to pay out the butt to get, you just pay anything to get some of these items like Stein of Falling Stars, four mana regeneration on it. Defiant gear has that plus some and it drops off of basic enemies that you'll experience in any zone. And I get why they did it, because this is raiding content, and it was meant to be raidable content, not groupable or soloable content. But just because of the fact that it overwrites all this really cool, really rare gear. Triggered. If I could ask... Uh, Dark Paw to start a server with like all current expansions and everything active. Probably what I would ask them to do is increase solo experience by a hundred percent, just a flat out solo experience a hundred percent, and give you the ability to have two mercenaries. Remove Defiant gear and. Uh, requirements to have multiple people to access these raids and yeah remove defiant gear remove access to necessary uh, remove access like flagging requirements for certain raids and also necessary group requirements Ooh. Ooh, look at that charisma and uh and give you a 100% solo experience boost. I think that would be awesome. Especially if you could use two mercenaries. Uh, that would, of course, still count for the, mer uh, the like experience boost. I think we would have so much fun. Especially if it was a free trade server, like Fear Gonna Be. God, that would be so cool. Plus, having two mercenaries... There we go. Ooh, really good.
Another ancient life bane, not really going to do us much good, but... Some really good items. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the south wing first. And honestly, back to what I was saying earlier, I really do think that having multiple mercenaries in the first place should already be a constant thing. I think in any current live servers, you should automatically have access to at least two mercenaries. Because then duoing, I think, would be so much more entertaining. Dagger of Thought. Yep, another one of those. Arm Guard of Piety. Arm Guard of Purity. I just asked for intelligent items and we're getting intelligence items. I'm so happy all this loot here is, uh, for the most part, non-lore. Like, it's very, very uncommon for this stuff to actually have lore. this lo yep lunar fungus cover tunic yep we are gonna have some happy twinked characters soon damn it that is not what I wanted to do <laughs> I completely just missed out on, like, the last half of the, uh, bosses here, so let's, uh, bring our dumbasses on back to the end, uh, back to the end here. Um, and on a side note, speaking of current in-game EverQuest content, are any of you planning on uh, ordering the newest expansion and actually playing it, the Night of Shadows expansion? It looks like it is the, uh, it's going to be the last, uh, hopefully the last in the series of the Luckland upgrades. So it's the last uh, level 100, uh, 120 expansion pack. Next year, we'll probably be jumping up to 121. I'm sorry, 125. And it is kind of cool as like kind of an Easter egg. Uh, some of the perks that you'll see on certain endgame content, uh, some of the perks mention uh, like working until uh, level 130. So, you know, we already have at least like the next uh, four years planned out, basically, of EverQuest. Because it's Every two years, we get a level increase. Okay, so let's not absentmindedly just walk through here. We went south. Let's go north. I do not want to give you my lockpicks. Thanks. Uh, 
That's kind of a funny glitch. It shows that I'm not invisible anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Bow of Shadows. Ooh. Breastplate of Speed. Nice, look at that dexterity. Okay, let's not forget two of the most important bosses here. Wait, where am I? Oh, God, I'm getting confused here. Here we go. We've got three bosses left here. Okay, that's a whole lot of Wanda Tranquility here, with uh, Kodak's Endless Intellect. I mean, hell, maybe I need to make an Enchanter, too. Crowd of Energy, Mark of Shadows... I'm pretty sure that was the only one that can drop the uh, circle of dis uh, disguise or circle of deceit. I can't remember. We're about to see. Damn, all of those chances and not a single illusion item. Ooh. Ancient Master of Death. There we go. We got the cool illusion for our Shadow Knight, our Shadow Knight, our Necromancer. It's lore. Ooh. Well, I mean, we still got some really good loot, even though we didn't get any additional illusion items. We're going to have some really, really good stuff for whenever our Necromancer at least hits level 60. Alright, and now for the big chick, Atenha Ra. What did- ooh, wow. Look at all that loot. Wow. Torch of Judgment. God, I used to think about that item back in the day whenever I was like, man, I really wish I could raid uh, Vexthal. My childish self just looking over these old school raid bosses and looking at all the pictures and Alakazam. Thinking how cool it would be to hit these bosses. Man, we got some really good stuff. Mask of Secrets. Oh yeah, some great intelligent caster items.
Okay. 100% worth it. And let's get out of here. That was really successful considering. So we're definitely going to do the Vazadra the Cursed Ring. We're going to do that one first and then we're probably going to kill the Emperor from there. Because those are typically the two I find are the most worthwhile. We have to kill the Wardens and the Taskmasters. Which is usually pretty quick. Being a rogue is awesome for this. Because we could just, just basically pop up out of thin air, backstab these guys, and then walk away. For some reason, these guys are all getting backstabbed for around 32,000, which is kind of odd. I don't know what the deal is with that uh, specific number, but, you know, another 32,000. kill our last two wardens on this side then we gotta go upstairs and kill those two individuals I can never remember their name and then we can start this ring visual glitch. That character is just like shimmying as he's running. That is pretty cool. What our little lockpick right here. And that one is easy peasy. Okay, so for these two guys, Roth something or another. And Roth of something or another. There we go. I was getting ready to get kind of concerned. Baza draw the exile. Let's escape from that. Get us a cool little picture of Baza draw the cursed. There we go. Alright, and let's look at our fat loots. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um, slashing weapon, which is going to be pretty badass. Probably one of the best slashing weapons you can use for a level 1 character. Uh, that's not any good. Hammer of the Sun. Dawn Call. That's an undead weapon. That's going to be pretty good. 
Sarazi and Longbow, ooh, definitely no. Tainted Scale, no. Blazing Raper, that's not something you see very often. Another Hammer of the Sun. Jade Skull Ring, nice, and all magic clicky. Pearl Necklace, okay. <laughs> cloak of Morning, okay. Nice, really, really good twink cloak. No level requirement. Golden Rod, really good. Two hander. This one's got a level requirement on it, which isn't that good, but ooh, here we go. The good stuff, the good weapons. Really good twink item because the stats and everything that come along with it, really, really good. Wistful Tunic of the Void. The Beast Lord and Leather Wearer version. So this, that run was really worth it. Some really good twink items out of that. Both the caster cloak and the uh, the two-hander, the anul magic clicky ring, and the sword. Okay, so we killed the basement boy. Now let's go kill the emperor. Ooh, is that? Wait a second. Oh, that's. There's the commander. One of the rare people. He's supposed to be pretty rare. Oh, the quest. Zazuth Idol. Oh, I did not mean to close that. Oh, I'm surprised the Vashir Mask dude was not up, considering the additional rare enemy spawns. Kind of surprising. Straight up to the third floor. Locked door. Locked door. Another named. Not really going to do us any good because he doesn't drop anything. And let's go. Let's get us a good little angle here of all of these guys. Commence the backstabbing. Let's pull all of these dudes right up here on the Emperor. And while we're waiting on him to actually respond, let's look to see what we got here. Oh, these wrists are super good. A couple of solid twink items right there if I've ever seen one. Mace of Confusion, really good. Intelligent Caster item, another really good earring. Nice. Really, really solid uh, loot drops here from this. Come on, Emperor, you can respond. I think I typically just kill the stuff too quick. I think that's probably the problem. Whenever we kill it too quick, we're just stuck sitting here waiting. Q Jeopardy theme. 
do 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 Oh, he appears to have been weakened by the destruction of his golem. It's almost like he was... I'm pretty sure the story is that he's be, he was technically, basically, like, in a dream state, just go, wandering through the plains there. And the blood of Sraza, the golem itself, was like an avatar of his blood that was here protecting uh, his, his vacant body. And whenever we killed it, it yoinked him from the plains. Because if there's any race in this game that has an ego, it is the lizard people race these dudes i guess the snake people i should say because if i say lizard people people will think i'm talking about uh the xr and they're kind of egotistical too but they're also just a beat down race of slaves at this point gimme 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 loot Give me two of your swords, you dick. Oh, I think I have one of his swords here. Shh. We're gonna attack him with this instead. Easy peasy. We got a fabled scimitar of Sh Shisar slang, which got the bane damage on it. That's all we needed. Come on, come on. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very awesome. This is worth summoning our banker for to make sure that we get an extra one of those swords. Bad ass. Uh, no, I did not want that, thank you. I wanted the boots. Uh, so let's go ahead and summon our Clockwork Banker real quick. What? Where's my Clockwork Banker? Oh, that is annoying. Because I am not about to miss out on that sword. Okay, I guess we're just going to do this the old-fashioned way. We're just going to teleport out and come running on back for our extra sword. So, uh, anyways, guys, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. That is double loot EverQuest. Double slash chance for triple loot EverQuest. Um, anyways, guys, 